Right. Like, it's so easy, again, and I get wrapped up in this, to think, okay, the mitochondria is just chemically making energy. No, it's electrically making energy in many ways, right? So it's just, if you are taking care of that and that system is functioning, and you can reverse engineer the basics of the human body as to what we did almost ancestrally, then we can start to unravel what can make that work better. And I don't want to say magically, but almost magically, the mindset comes back into place. You know, it's the first thing of like, okay, you do have to put your body first sometimes for the mind to actually follow. And I think sometimes we compartmentalize. We very much so. We almost always compartmentalize mind and body you know, two separate things. And let's work on the mind. Let's do this. Let's meditate. Let's do this. Let's, let's treat with drugs, whatever we got to do body, same kind of thing. Okay. We need to exercise. I need 120 minutes of this exercise. It's so, but it's like, wait a minute, guys, like these are the things, the, the, the sprinting, the co- like that cohesiveness between mind and body that allows that to actually click. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, and again, a lot of this is definitely stuff I didn't learn in medical school. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, you know, some of the stuff has, has been, coming out new, but, um, yeah, it, 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 of course it's, it's a two way arrow, right? The mind affects the body, the body affects the mind. Uh, that is pretty understood. I think even in kind of like your total lay circles now, right? So, but then in some ways, the real question is like mechanistically, how is that happening? Mm-hmm. And so how do we best understand that from all the different lenses of science we have and how that it can provide kind of like kind of just like nuggets of information that clinicians can use and patients uh, can can latch on to to produce the behaviors that optimize that connection right 